Now you don't have to have watched many of our episodes to know that I'm a big fan of solar generators on boats. They're just brilliantly handy things to have. I've had loads, tested loads, but we are getting ready for ocean voyages now. And one of the things that you've got to think about them on a boat is where you're going to store them, where you can actually properly hold them in, hold them down, strap them down, because if you get a knock down, they're big heavy things to be flying around. And I must admit, that is the reason that I said yes to testing this, because we've got enough of them, didn't really need another one. Uh, but this is the perfect size to go in our little uh, our little hole here. So that's one of the reasons. I'll put it out. I'll take, show you what it is. It's an All Powers 2500. Uh, we'll get it on the, the bench in a minute and have a little look at it. But while it's down here, I'm just going to show you one of the things that I do while it's in position. So I've got this lead which comes down, which is uh, straight out of our solar from the uh, arch on the back. And that can plug in here. Now this can take a hell of a lot of solar. It can take a thousand watts of solar. We haven't got that much, but um, this is my switch and I can just switch that down. And instead of now charging the house bank, that is now charging this machine. So uh, let's see, you can actually have a look on it. So you can actually see, it's getting 248 watts. That's out of one of our panels. That's out of a bifacial panel. Uh, so it can charge from that at any time when, when the house bank's full and I just want to switch over to here. It's nice and easy to do it in position. So let's just put this up here so we can have a little bit of a look at it. Uh, it's not light, this. It's, uh, it's not something you want to be moving around much, but as I say, this is going to live down there and I might just slide it along the floor to have it underneath the saloon table when we're charging computers and that sort of thing, which is something we use these for quite a lot. So with that in mind, let's just go through what it's got because the, the thing that I do like about this, it isn't just the size that, that made me think, oh yeah, I definitely want to ha have this one. It was this as well, the fact that all of these have got nice little rubber covers over them because one of the things that you do find having these on board is that the salt air sort of gets in there in the end. Uh, it's usually okay with all the mains ones. It's, it's with the USBs. You, you plug a phone in to charge and it's just not charging properly and you know it it's just gets a bad connection because it just gets a little bit of, of, of uh, corrosion you know, around the joints in there. So this hopefully will stop that. It's, uh, you know, it just seems like a, a better system. So that's sort of one of the, one of the reasons I decided I li I'd like this one. And this is a, a 2000 watt hour unit uh, like a lot of the ones this size R seems to do exactly what it says on the tin. It's got a very good pure sine wave uh, output for the on, on the inverter, four outputs on here. Um, and then that can go up to 4,000 watt surge, it says, which is really good if it can do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's rated 2,500 watts, so it's, it's usual capacity, and that's fine because that'll do everything. It'll do your toaster and your hairdryer and all those sorts of things uh, out, of, out of these different outputs. Uh, it's got two USB-C outputs, so they're 100 watts. Uh, really useful these days for, for everything, those, um, because it's, you know, for things like charging a, a laptop, people don't understand that um, you can't really, no matter what it is with these normal USBs, just charge something that takes that much power because it hasn't got the technology. What these do to get to 100 watts is they up the voltage. All the little uh, USB-Cs work on five volts. Well, this, they're smart, the USB-Cs. They look at the device and they say, oh, well, you know, can you take more than five volts, 10 volts, 20 volts? And if you can, it'll, it'll, it'll deliver that. So it gets the power up that way by upping the voltage to whatever you're, you're plugging it into. So it's great to have two of those. Uh, it's got the, uh, the ever-present uh, cigar lighter type socket. Not a fan of those. Um, I mean, it does come you know, with th those sorts of things to, to plug in the solar and all sorts of different, different things come with that. I prefer to have uh, the XT60s for, for as much things as possible. And on the boat, I've replaced some of the uh, cigarette lighter things with XT60s because they're much better. And I can, I can charge this as well as that unit that I've got uh, in there that I've just shown you to, to charge it with. Over here, you'll see I've got an XT60 output here. Um, that's I've just wired in to, to the same circuit as the, the cigar lighter, but it's better than that because this will start getting warm if you're taking sort of eight, 10 amps out of that. Uh, so it's much better to have these. And I've, you might notice, put that through a voltage sensitive relay. So that will only be on when there's enough voltage going into the house bank if, if it's receiving charge. At the moment, it's receiving charge from the solar, which is why it's on. Uh, if when, when it gets dark and the solar goes down, 
down, that'll turn off and you won't be getting power out of here. So, so you can't just drain your house bank by mistake by doing it in this way. It's very easy to do and quite, quite a good system. And obviously, you know, if I'm running the engine, it'll charge. If I'm getting solar, it'll charge. If I'm on shore power, it'll, you know, it'll charge. All those times when it's got power, it will charge. So I can plug this lead in. You can see I've just actually taken the, the cigarette light a bit off the end of this and uh, spliced a, an XT60 on the end of it. And then I've got an XT60 on the other end, which I can plug into the output at the back of here. Let's just turn it around. It goes in there, and now this will be getting some charge. It'll come to life, and it gets some charge um, straight from the boat. So, you know, it's not going to get a huge amount. It's getting, well, it's getting 98 watts. That's not too bad. That's sort of what you expect. It's rated uh, um, usually eight amps, 10 amps the most from something like this. So yeah. 100 watt now and just leave this plugged into there for things like when you're you know running the engine if you're just doing a load of motoring you've already charged the house bank up then you might as well charge this up as well it's just a another way of charging it that's the beauty of these things lots of different ways of charging it so let's have a little look at some of the other ways so if i have a look in my little box of leads my all power leads i've got a normal kettle plug type lead obviously this can come with whatever you want with it for and uh, in terms of uh, the plug I've got European plugs on this because most of the ones on the boat are European and uh, 220 volts but yeah they'll do a, a 110 volt American version as well if that's what you want uh, some of these as well I've seen online have got four of these outputs and in the middle they've got uh, an output for an RV so I don't think that's uh, probably 30 amps out of there. That would be useful uh, to have because you could take that and have that wired so that on, in the event of your house bank going down for any reason, I mean, I've got a lithium bank now on here, obviously it's got a BMS. Something went wrong with that, cut it off. You could have a system whereby you, you plugged into that RV output and use this just as an emergency back up for your boat. So that, that would be a good thing. I would, I would have quite liked to have got that if I'd known they, that they did that. As I say, I've seen it online. I don't know if they still they still make them like that, but it's a very good idea, I think. Um, so yeah, you can, uh, I'm gonna plug this in. I'm on shore power at the moment because we are at the dock on the hard. So yeah, if I plug that in as well, uh, now you'll see it'll take from both. It'll take a little while to uh, decide what it's, what it's gonna do. But yeah, there you go, up to 877 watts, 1,160, 1,300. So it's a soft start and it'll bring it up. Uh, and it'll charge very quickly uh, with, with this. And, you know, with obviously with several inputs in, it'll charge even quicker than that. So really, really good system. Now, I might not have been over enthusiastic about the solar generator, but I certainly can be enthusiastic about this one because this is the solar panel that you can get with it. It's a 400 watt solar panel. I mean, it's a bit, a bit of a beast, these 400 watt ones, but uh, this is the smallest and the lightest of uh, any of the ones that I've seen so far. And it looks like it's been the best built as well and, uh, and very efficient. So I'll get it out and show you exactly why I like it. So first of all, the, uh, the way it's packaged, put together, I mean, it just folds out, but uh, you know, it's all good, well-made, strong. Uh, I've had ones fall apart on me. It doesn't look like this one's going to fall apart. Uh, it's easy to carry. These things are quite heavy. Uh, I did have some 100 watt ones before, which are much easier to put around, but you, know, you just need the power really. And for us, you know, quite often uh, when we're at anchor, we'll have this over the top. Even when we're sailing, if it's light winds, this can just go on top of the dinghy. We store the dinghy on deck here and it just comes out and it can, it can stay there. It provides you know, a really useful uh, bit of energy. But let me show you as we take this out, because it's, you know, it's not like other panels. It, it, it feels much more sturdy, uh, much stiffer. And uh, oh, I'll push it along. That's the size of it for 400 watts. It sort of fits quite nicely across here on the dinghy. And there you go. So nicely put together. It's got uh, little legs on it, so you could stand it up if you were uh, somewhere where you wanted to angle it towards the sun. I don't bother to do that because we're normally at anchor swinging around or sailing and you're all over the place. So you're just chasing yourself around if you try and sort of do that really. But uh, yeah, have a look at it. It's got little things like little strong loops on it here. So, you know, I could actually tie that in uh, to, uh, to, to the boat if I wanted or have it on there while I was sailing, which as I say, we do do sometimes. So it's got a nice bag underneath of here as well. So you can get all your leads in. So it's an important thing, I think. I've got 
an extension on the end of these two. These are the two ends here, and uh, just the usual MP4s. And if I put this down through the porthole, we can try it out. Okay, so let's see what we've got. I've got the uh, lead coming through the porthole here. I'll turn it around, and go into the back inputs panel. And we just plug it in, it's just a normal XD60 input. And let's see what we've got. So this wakes it up. Oh, and straight away, 275 watts, it's saying. 272, that's really impressive, really impressive. That's more than it was getting out of our big bifacial panel on the back arch, that's amazing. So let me get something that I can plug in. First of all then, let's just plug one of my power tool batteries in to actually get this going, same as uh, pretty much all of the other, these uh, power stations, solar power stations, you have to just keep your finger on the uh, panel that you want to power up, so that'll power up the inverter now and this will start taking some draw. I've, I've taken all the inputs out of it for now, so we'll just see what's, what it's going to take to discharge. So it's taking 51 watts to, uh, to that battery. Let's plug a few other things in. Uh, got a drone battery here. So you've got lots of different outputs, obviously, that you can all take from at once. Doesn't have to be all from the inverter. We'll take that one. It's a smart battery, so it has to be turned on. Uh, let's put the iPad in there as well. So all these have come up. We'll have a look. It's got a uh, an app as well, so you can have a look at this on your phone. So we'll do that in a minute and just see what it's showing that's coming from all these different uh, outputs now. But let's put something that's got a bigger draw on it. Let's put a hair dryer in there as well. And see if we can tempt it to not work. So that's that's taking 2036 watts. So yeah, it's taking over 2000 watts and it's keeping it at that. So yeah, that's testing a bit. 2035, 2029 watts. Got this on full pelt. And everything else charging at the same time. Yeah, that's pretty good. Turn that down. And it's saying it can run all this for 10 hours. Let's plug some inputs back in and see what it says then. I'll plug this one in. Might as well plug the, uh, turn this back on as well. So we've got a bit of solar going back in. So now it's got an output and an input. It's only taking uh, 96 watts out now because uh, I've got the hairdryer off and it's got 501 going in so yeah look it's all fine let's turn this back on actually just out of interest oh, that's there so that's interesting I think some of the uh, power is going straight through it's not all coming from the inverter because you've got 1761 now coming out rather than over 2000 so I think uh, it's clever enough to take some directly through. Let's turn this back off. I think this drone battery is fully charged. One thing while we're talking about these sorts of things, I always keep drone batteries in these, these uh, fireproof cases. Uh, you've got to watch out, you know, especially if you're going to be offshore on a boat, fire risk with all the things that have batteries these days. I mean, that's one of the things about this as well. This is LifePo 4, which is obviously the safest form of lithium. Uh, you can get these solar power stations with all sorts of different types of uh, uh, lithium batteries in it. LifePo 4 is definitely going to be the best for you because you could you could drive a stake through this and it's, you know, it's, it's not going to catch light. It's, it's, they're not like that. They're, they're not in any way volatile like some of the others might be. I mean, they're, they're very safe in themselves, these things, because they've got so many little cutoffs and BMSs within the whole system to uh, to control it so I wouldn't worry about it too much but as I say in the call in the you know the case of getting it wet puncturing it doing whatever the life boat for is the safest thing so obviously the best thing to have on a boat so let's just have a quick look at the app then uh, I'll put it up here so you can see it it's that one there 
and you can see yeah it's got 68 percent it's all pretty basic it doesn't go into a lot of detail but then you don't really need to it's, it's just so you can switch things on and off from here and have a look and, and see what it's got so you say it says it's going to last at this sort of draw for another 20 hours and 18 minutes uh, it's telling you it's got uh, you know this panel and uh, the usb panel switched on um, and if i plug it back in again to the mains let's uh see it comes up again it'd be a little bit of a, a soft start but it should you should see it on both i mean this is quite a clear actually uh display on the on the unit itself it's, it's very nice it's, it's telling you it's already it's getting charge in there it's got it 450 is it uh, gonna tell me on here yeah input is just over here so input and output input 800 483 output 53 so yeah that's uh, it all matches up as it should but yeah it has got a really nice clear display so i can't actually see myself using this too much as a limit to how far away this can be on the boat but useful to have just in case anyway so yeah i think the r 2500 good unit good solid unit i mean obviously we'll keep using it keep testing it over time but yeah definitely glad i got this one